I really felt like drawing faces from photos again and I luckily had the idea to record this process and I am so glad that I did because I ended up really loving the spread. I just love it. For the last month I felt as if something was wrong or missing in my faces and I think with this spread I learned so much about what I could add to my own drawings from imagination to improve on those. On this spread I decided to stick with one of my favorite mediums, the almighty pencil. I also used an 8B pencil for the darker areas and then this very very beautiful pastel green acrylic paint marker for the background but you will see that at the end of the video. As I mentioned, I love, love, love how this spread turned out and while I was doing it, I felt so excited about it. Everyone who loves drawing probably knows this wonderful feeling of just feeling excited about what you're doing, you are happy, you're smiling while drawing and I felt like that while working on the spread. By the way, I am a little bit sick, so please forgive me that my voice cracks a little bit more than usual. Initially, I wanted to upload a vlog kind of video about recharging my battery after spending so much energy on the event in Cologne that I will talk about in a couple of minutes. And this time I even managed to record more things. Ooh. But I also wanted to finish that video with another character, like last video. But when I wanted to start drawing and designing it, I didn't feel like doing it. So I wanted to call it a day because I was so, so tired. For some reason though, the sudden urge to draw faces hit me and I was thinking about finishing the vlog with a simple spread in my sketchbook. But because I ended up liking the spread so much, I thought it would be too sad to just put it at the end of a video for one minute or something. So I decided to upload a sketchbook session and then for next week the video about recharging my battery. As I mentioned, I am still so so tired from Cologne and also a little bit sick. We went to Cologne in a group and one of us got tested positive with the sickness that I shouldn't mention on YouTube because they are very strict about it. I also feel very sick and tired but so far my test is still negative. Maybe I also got it but also the bus I was taking to get back home was very cold and maybe I just caught a cold on that. I don't know, but at least I know that I will take it very slow the next couple of days until I feel a little bit better. I also have some things that I want to work on in terms of my art. In the last video, I also told you about the fact that I wanted to practice painting feet when I am back at home. I am back at home. I also want to practice my hand painting skills, so maybe you will see some of the things that I will be doing during these practice sessions over on my Instagram, which is also linked down below. Also, I would love to spend a little bit more time on drawing or painting clothes and fabric digitally as well. After the last couple of study sessions, I already feel a little bit safer when it comes to drawing clothes and folds, and that means I am slowly getting there and that makes me motivated to learn more. My sketchbook is also more than halfway done but honestly, I am not a huge fan of this one so far. I kept the drawings really rough most of the time and I would say around 95% of the drawings so far are just studies from photos. But also, the goal for the sketchbook was to practice, learn and improve. I know I did that, but to be honest, I don't know if that sketchbook would be interesting to show you in a sketchbook tour. I want to show it to you anyways because as I mentioned multiple times on this channel already, one of my main goals is to keep it real on here. And if that means to show you a rough sketchbook, then I will show you a rough sketchbook. Another reason that I mostly worked from photos on the sketchbook is that I for some reason still feel a little bit afraid of drawing from imagination lately. I don't know where that is coming from all of a sudden. But I know I will also tackle that fear. If you remember, I uploaded a tour of a sketchbook that I tried to fill with drawings from imaginations a while ago. I started that sketchbook 
in November last year and maybe it would be nice to challenge myself with something like that again at the end of this year or maybe even with the next sketchbook. I don't know yet how I want to go about it though but maybe I will also try to keep it 50-50 so that I can still leave myself some room to do studies traditionally or I could try to fill it mostly from imagination and every time that I notice something that I could improve on, I could study that. I don't know yet, but I know. I will figure something out. I think it could be very interesting to see what I improved on and what might need a little bit more work when it comes to my drawings from imagination. I also had this thought before starting the sketchbook that I'm working on currently, and that is also the reason why the sketchbook is filled with more studies and is focused on improving rather than producing good looking art and sketches. I think I will be done with the sketchbook in around a month, which also means that the most exciting part is coming closer and closer, choosing my next sketchbook. The last five sketchbooks I had, this one included, were all Moleskine art collection sketchbooks and I am thinking about either buying another one of these because I really fell in love with the paper or maybe I will go to a bigger art store and I will try to find another one with good paper. I need to touch the paper first because I am very very picky when it comes to the smoothness of the paper. But on the other hand I am also very happy with the Moleskine sketchbooks and I love the way I can work on them. So maybe I will just get it again. There is also a third option, the Letter Art Supply sketchbook. I already mentioned this one in my pushing through art block video, I also showed it to you if I remember correctly. I already filled one of these sketchbooks but they got so much more expensive ever since I bought mine, which was I think roughly two years ago. But the cover of that sketchbook is the best feeling cover that I ever touched. The paper is very yellowish and also very, very smooth. It is definitely not for everyone. I am still so unsure, but I mean, I still have at least a month to decide on my next sketchbook, so there is no need to rush it. And while we are at it, I filled so many sketchbooks and I was thinking about uploading some of the older sketchbooks as well on this channel. I personally love watching tours of older sketchbooks and then tours of the most recent ones because it makes me feel so inspired to see how much you can improve by just putting in the effort. Please let me know your thoughts on that because that way I can see how many people are interested in it or not. I also wanted to give you some updates on The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. I learned so much about myself again. And I also improved so much mentally. In the beginning of this video, I told you about the initial plan to upload a vlog and that I wanted to finish that video with another one session, very quick character. That didn't work out. I know that usually I would have started to feel anxious on the inside once I noticed that this character that I started to draw just doesn't feel right. Thoughts like, oh, you are so bad, and see, this is the proof that you are a bad artist, would have appeared. But this time, nothing like that even crossed my mind. I didn't even think about it. Instead, I knew that I was probably rusty after taking a break from drawing for one week. I also knew that I, for some reason, really didn't feel like drawing this character now. And instead of feeling horrible about my art or even thinking about bad things like that, I decided to spend some relaxing time in my sketchbook and I also recorded it. I only noticed that while I was writing the morning pages the next day and this realization was insane. I would have never thought that I would improve that fast. I know that there will be times where my old way of thinking will challenge me again, but I know now that I am learning and getting better and those times where I will honestly feel okay about bad days will become more and more. Another thing you have to do besides the morning pages is that you also have to take yourself on artist dates every week. 
I think that this might be something that could help blocked people a lot. I already used to do that every now and then before working with this book, so that didn't change too much for me, except now I have to go on dates on a weekly basis. Also, because I was in Cologne for six days, I decided to take two weeks for the assignments of week three. And trust me, that was a very good decision. I had absolutely no time in Cologne to do anything at all because I was there to work as a volunteer. And in my free time, I spent some time with the people that I went there with and that was very nice. I really tried to get my morning pages done, but I had to skip two days in total. One of those days, I had to get up at 6.30 because my shift started at, I think, 7.45 and I still wanted to eat breakfast before that. And the other one was the first day of Gamescom. I had to catch my bus back on that day as well, so I tried to get there as early as possible to waste no time and see as much as possible. On one day, I also only managed to fill one page later in the evening. I know you are supposed to write these pages first thing in the morning, but I was just so happy that I found some time slots to write them at all. I knew it would be difficult, but I didn't know that it would be that difficult to fill those pages. I guess on some occasions it is okay to skip some days, as long as you don't skip them out of laziness. And now I wanted to tell you a little bit about the experience that I had in Cologne at DEFCOM and also if it is worth it to volunteer there as an artist in order to connect to people. DEFCOM is an event for developers in the gaming industry. You can connect with professionals, listen to many different and very interesting talks and you can also take a look at new games that are in development. I decided to volunteer there to see if it might help me with getting a job in the industry as an artist because I think we all know by now that the easiest way to get in this industry is by connecting with other people. As a volunteer you get to go to the event for free, I mean you work there for free as well, but you also get a Gamescom ticket for free including the business area and also the press day which comes in pretty handy. You have to pay for your expenses like hotel, bus and so on yourself, but they provide you with one meal per day though, so that is very nice, which also led to me spending almost no money at all per day. There are different roles and tasks that a volunteer get assigned to. I think I had the best ones for me personally, to be honest. I love being nice to people, and so I had to do the access control at one stage and then on two shifts I had to greet the people at the VIP launch. That itself was a lot of fun for me. If you are thinking about volunteering next year, but you don't like interacting with people, don't worry. You can write that in your application and they will consider that while planning the shifts. I had the feeling that the planning itself was a tiny little bit chaotic. But I can imagine that this is something very normal at events on this scale. Because I mean, there will be things that will happen out of the blue and the planning has to change. So I am very forgiving when it comes to that. Also, the leader of the volunteer group was very good at solving issues that appeared all of a sudden. She fit absolutely perfectly in that role. You also get to talk to all the people at events outside of the DEFCOM at day as well. There are parties planned where you can meet all the speakers and attendees if you want to. But now it's time for the big question. Is it worth it for artists to attend? If you want to go there to connect with people that could potentially hire you, then my impression is no. Events like the art department, we are playgrounds in Berlin, for example, are the way to go for that. At DEFCOM, most of the people were really focused on the technical side of development. I think I only met one artist speaker. But would I volunteer again next year if I get the chance? To be honest, yes, I probably would. <laughs> I had so much fun with the group and I met so many cool people. It's also pretty nice to learn more about other parts of gaming development and it was a very nice experience and even though it was chaotic at some points, I would do it again. 
I had so much fun. But yeah, that's it for this video. And I hope, as always, that you took something out of it. And I will see you next week.